Don't. Don't what? Don't give me hope. Hey everyone, how are y'all doing? Hope you all are having a great summer. I'm just gonna go right to the chase. Yes, after a 10 month absence, I am coming back to the Isle. So, what gives? Why'd I come back after so long? After being so adamant on never coming back? Well, I'll explain. This video will be split into sections for those that only care about the content, although I really stress that you should watch the video in its entirety, since context is important. Regardless, shortcuts will exist for your leisure. I wanted this video to be more simple, but things get very real very fast. You have been warned. Let me start right off the bat by saying that I have had zero regrets leaving the Isle or the Isle community. In hindsight, regardless of how you feel about the game's state in its older versions, the community and the development team, particularly Dondi, were not something for anyone to be proud of. With its toxic atmosphere that was only exemplified by the team's unprofessional behavior, that was tolerated by most purely because back then we didn't have anywhere else to go for this kind of game. Moving on to more present issues, I still like to think that my reason for leaving was very justified. I hope everyone here can see that the development team harboring a pedophile was a good enough reason to lose faith in IP, regardless of whether it was intentional or unintentional. I did have people that debated me on this in the original goodbye video, given the separate the art from the artist argument, or less classy remarks that it was blown out of proportion or that nobody cares anymore. To those people out there, I hope these excuses will hold up when your real-life community or organization finds a pedophile in their ranks. Absolutely pathetic. Speaking of which, this is something that I want to reiterate. This is something that happened. This was a very dark moment for both the Isle itself and for everyone attached to it. The Isle was at its absolute lowest, and it was a very traumatic experience. I wasn't my usual self for a few weeks because it was very hard to see a game that I've grown very close to absolutely tear itself apart, with zero remorse to anyone but themselves. To forget about it makes both customers and game developers vulnerable to making the same mistakes, and to dismiss the whole thing as the aisle being cancelled, or the accusations as mere rumors, is absolutely abhorrent and disrespectful to the victims. However, Saying all of this, that doesn't mean that there can't be redemption, or forgiveness, at least very cautionary forgiveness in the case of the latter. Paradigm is gone and the team has moved on. Why did I come back even after all of this? Well, it comes down to what my main criticisms of the Isle were. The first was a shit show itself, obviously. I hope my trust issues are understandable after they acted like they were in the right until the very bitter end. Speaking of which, Punch Packet. Punch Packet still needs to pay for his sins. Don't think I forgot, you motherfucker. Second, the gameplay itself could still be considered lackluster, but this is something that is more forgivable since future development will likely fix this. Third, and this is what brings us full circle, the Isle's creature design. The Isle's creature design has been a problem for the Isle since the very beginning, and in a few different ways too. First, the Isle has a problem with design consistency, which is where a lot of designs aesthetically clash with each other, or otherwise don't look like they belong in the same world. Let me explain. All the Isle's designs, for the most part, can comfortably fit within three different categories. First, there are the naturalistic designs. These are the ones that either stay very faithful to the original animal, or otherwise keep them very grounded with maybe one slight new feature or two. Second, you have the unique designs. These are the ones that are completely out there compared to most other dinosaur designs in media, which makes them stand out more, for better and for worse. And finally, and I don't even need to explain here, there are the Jurassic Park ripoffs. Now do you see what the problem is here? All of these creatures don't feel like they belong together. This is something that probably isn't obvious for the usual layman, 
but this really sticks out if you're made aware of it as a dinosaur fan. Which you probably are, seeing how this is the Isle, which, while popular, still is a rather obscure indie title that has mostly attracted these types of people anyway. Second, and there are probably some people that were waiting for me to get to this, and Virma's shitty designs. Oh boy, here we go. You know the ones I'm talking about, so I'm not even going to fully explain what I mean. These designs are just bad, and no, I don't mean just in my opinion, I mean on an objective level based on what the game is going for. Why are these designs a problem? The Isle has always been intended to be a game rooted in realism, albeit in a sci-fi world with dinosaurs in it. This is made obvious by the game's efforts to create a very immersive landscape that has often captured people's imaginations, along with mechanics that often bring realism to the forefront, like the ambushing of Dinosuchus, or how most animals are able to quickly turn and defend themselves in combat. These are things these animals are realistically expected to do. It comes naturally. So tell me, why many of the actual dinosaurs themselves don't follow this philosophy at all. Now, there is something I want to clarify. Realistic and accurate aren't necessarily the same, although the two are linked in a fundamental way, which is their relation to the actual animals that they're supposedly based on. I am not asking for the dinosaurs to be scientifically accurate. This isn't meant to be a simulator or to be educational. However, many of the Isle's dinosaurs are essentially just... fake. They often don't correspond to what they're related to at all, to the point where you just wonder what the hell happened when they were creating these things. How does that get to that? If the game was slated to have your favorite dinosaur, you'd expect it to be your favorite dinosaur, not some imposter that looks nothing like it save for one to two traits. At that point, why share the name? They're nothing alike. There are so many dinosaurs known in the fossil record that some other one is bound to fit what you wanted for the game better. It's absolutely ridiculous. The Jurassic World franchise has a similar problem, albeit it's even more guilty since the original film was very much a scientific movie. The Unnatural History Channel made a very good video on the franchise's problems with accuracy that I personally think is a much watch for anyone that is a dinosaur fan. I'll link to their video will be in the description. Again, this isn't really the same case, but the Isle has a similar issue of not really giving a shit about realism in some of the dinosaur designs, despite the fact that they're very much what the world itself represents. It often feels like they care more about being different rather than making sense. You can make the excuse for things like the strains playing a role in the game, but the devs themselves have said that they'll be extremely rare, and they're not really a part of the game's central identity. The Isle is not like Ark Survival Evolved where it's a fantasy world filled with not only dinosaurs, but also mutants, robots, and dragons. This is a game about you, whether animal, man, or something in between, in a grounded, realistic world ruled by dinosaurs, where everyone just wants to survive. I hope I explained it well enough to where people see my issue is with this. However, that's enough negativity. Because while many of the Isle's designs are shit, there are many that aren't shit. In fact, lately most of the designs revealed for the game have not only not been trash, but have been phenomenal. Staying faithful to the source material while giving it a unique twist that gives them both identity and purpose. These recent designs have been the wake-up call that has brought me back to the game. It really feels, to me, like they've listened to the complaints that these older, shittier designs had, which is an indicator to me that they've changed since the Paradigm drama. The game has been progressing, the plans have shifted since the low point that was in Virma's launch, Dondi has been relegated to the background, and the designs of the dinosaurs have gotten better and better. I now feel comfortable putting some trust in the development team, even if a little. So that brings us to the tier list. This tier list will be my entry point back into the game, along with releasing all the pent up rage that I've had for some parts of the game over the past 10 months. Alright, time to finally get around to the Isle Design tier list. For anyone that skipped to this part, I need to stress, again, to at least listen to my input for the Isle's designs in a general sense, since that will be very important to what I think a good design for the Isle is. Also, for this tier list, the design of the animal does not just mean how it looks, it can also mean how it moves, how it sounds, and how it has impacted design choices for the game. Since many of these creatures are works in progress, this tier list is very likely to change very quickly. 
Also, I'd just like to give a special thanks to my good friend Domini, that has created the design for this tier list along with the graphics of each dino. With that out of the way, let's get to the tier list. Each crater may or may not be quick since there are 45 of these bloody things. Oh, 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 f before I forget. I won't be including Taco, Velo, or Oro in this tier list, since it might be up in the air as to whether or not they'll be in a Virma. I don't really know. So I'll just list real quick where they'd be if they are. Taco would be S tier, of course, it, it, it's God. Oro would be A tier, it's just a good dino design all around. Velo would be B tier, because it's pretty sick looking despite its small presence. The thing that holds it back in my opinion is the lack of feathers. When it comes to raptors, I'm not quite against scaliness in a game like this, but it comes back to design consistency again. I'll bring this up again later, but outside of a select few, all the dinosaurs that had feathers in real life also do in the aisle. So with Velo, the nakedness can be distracting. In a twist in my usual tier list videos, we'll be starting with the top first, with the good designs, because I really want to talk about the good ones. In S tier, we have the dinosaurs that I absolutely love. They're incredible. First up is Allosaurus. At this point, I think we could just consider Allo a classic. It has had some rough phases, but I think it has established itself to be one of the cleanest looking theropod dinosaurs. Very sharp with its streamlined body and pronounced head crests. Next is Carnotaurus, which I guess can be another classic since it really hasn't changed that much throughout the Owl's development. Carnotaurus has always had a signature look to it, and it is perfectly encapsulated in the Owl's design, with its lean and mean build with those cool looking horns. Ceratosaurus in the Isle, to me, is the epitome of badass. Just look at this guy. The tough armored body with the big head really give off that I don't give a shit attitude that the devs really want to give him. Whether or not they'll actually succeed with that, we'll have to see. I've always liked crocodilians, and Dinosuchus is exactly what I wanted. I remember back in the Isle's very early stages where you could walk under the water. I used to pick the blue wreck skin and go Tyrannosuchus where I'd crouch and creep under the surface and ambush anything that went to get a drink. I'm really happy that such a playstyle has returned back to the game. Some people might wonder why this specifically is getting so much praise. It's difficult to fuck up a crocodile, isn't it? Well, normally I'd say that if a certain other dinosaur game didn't fuck with Dinochirus. The fan inclusion and the most recent design revealed as of this video. This design right here was the breaking point for my opinion on the Isle's more recent designs. It's the epitome of a good dinosaur design. It's very much a Dinochirus, but it's got some unique quirks on top of that. Like the unique looking beak and those big, meaty paws. I couldn't have asked for a better Dinochirus. You'll see a trend with other dinosaurs in S tier following the similar design philosophy. Next up, we got Herrerasaurus, which stands out quite a bit compared to the other designs discussed so far. For a design that was introduced when most of the other ones that the Isle was putting out were utter garbage, I was absolutely blown away by how great the design for the Herrerasaurus was. It's still very much a Herrerasaurus to me. The more reptilian design tells me that's a more basal dinosaur, like Herrera was, and the skull is a giveaway to me that it's, it is very much Herrerasaurus. However, the more lanky build tells its own story. As the Isle plans for Herrerasaurus to be its signature tree-climbing dinosaur, the long limbs of this design tell you that it's adapted to do this. While definitely one of the more out there designs, I think Herrerasaurus stands out as a great example of a creature that tells you what it's about purely from a glance. Our next design isn't from a dinosaur, but from a pterosaur. Quetzalcoatlus, from what I've seen, has gotten a mixed reception, but I think it does a great job remaining clearly a Quetzalcoatlus while doing its own thing. This is in sheer contrast to the Pteranodon, which, while I won't completely spoil it now, I think is a complete dumpster fire of a creation. Kits may go down this list once the animations come in, if Terra is any indicator though. But I think Kets is an amazing design as of now. To another recent concept, um, notice the trend with Kets, Dino, and this guy being newer designs. We have Shentungosaurus. As a Shentung main prior to survival, I am very excited and grateful that not only did they bring it back for Invirma, but they didn't ruin its design either. It's still very much a Shentangosaurus, but it's got those spikes on the back that give it quite the unique flair, while also being very imaginative in my opinion. Some people were spooked that the Shentangosaurus literally had exposed backbone, but that's not actually what's going on. You see, certain hadrosaur species have a series of structures along their backs, which are called tabular scoots. If you're familiar with other recent dinosaur games, you'd have seen these on Saurians and PKs and Montosaurs. 
What the Isles concept artists did here was design the tabular scutes in a way that they look like vertebrae, which I think is actually really clever. Do you see, developers? You don't need to absolutely overhaul a dinosaur in order for it to be unique. I really want them to do more of this with dinosaur designs. Alright, we have two designs left for S tier, and these two are herbivores that have already been implemented into Ibirna. First, they're stegosaurs. As much as I'll miss the sassy walking original, I really love the more appropriately bulky and compact version that Ibirna has brought us. Finally, there's Tenatosaurus. My opinion of Tenatosaurus has not changed a bit in my 10 month absence. I am absolutely in love with this angry bastard. If you want a textbook example on how to make an otherwise standard looking herbivore be badass, look no further. Tenatosaurus carries the build and extremely long tail that Tenatosaurus is known for, while also having other really cool features like the crest on the face and those mean looking claws. I'll be continuing to main Tenatosaurus, I just love it so, so much. A tier is for the designs that are really good, but I personally don't have a strong opinion on them in one way or another. They're just good to me. That's about it. Since I don't have a strong opinion about them outside of being good, this will be a rapid fire segment where I just name them all. Okay, here we go. Avaceratops, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diabloceratops, Kentrosaurus, Myasaura, Monolophosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Protoceratops, Sucumimus, Triceratops. All good dinos, but I don't have much to say besides that. Moving on to B tier, these are designs that are... decent. They're leagues better than the trash that will be present in the lower tiers, but there are a few nitpicks here and there that I do have with them. First up is Baryonyx. While I do love the design overall, I feel like the head could use some work. I really feel like it should have gotten the more pronounced head crest that Baryonyx is known to have. Otherwise, it's really easy to confuse with Tsukumimus at a glance. Next, there is the Lophosaurus. Now, Dilo here is a unique case. It's a really inoffensive design. There's nothing really wrong with it, and I personally like it quite a bit. However, this is where design, not just including looks, comes in. While it's perfectly fine in the Isles context, I personally see myself growing tired of venomous dinosaurs in media. Yeah, this started with Jurassic Park, but the Isles Dilo has, has kind of further pushed this into the trope of video games. Which to me has been very annoying, especially when some dinosaurs that have great potential just become known as the ones with venom. <laughs> Homalocephaly is next, and this is one that I haven't really figured out what I don't like about it. It's still just fine, it's neat, kind of adorable, but there's something about it that's quite off-putting to me. I just haven't quite figured it out yet. Maybe it'll grow on me when it's put into motion and in-game. I don't know. Now, there is Hypsilophodon. The design is definitely one of the more out there ones, although in my opinion, it is in a good way, that is both pretty to look at, while being unintrusive as to what the dinosaur itself is about. Also, it's a fluffy Arnitskian, which is very cool to see. However, this is a double-edged sword in my opinion. My main criticism for Hypsy is, although I very much do like the feathered look, why Hipsy? There are other dinos in the game in my opinion that have either been shafted in the feather department or simply weren't given any when they should have. In this department, Hipsy is pretty distracting to me. Although given that its whole thing is kind of being distracting in general, I don't think it bothers a lot of you. Oviraptor came at a time when nobody was really sure how they do other small theropod dinosaurs, and I'm glad to see they went the feathered route with it. Along with their xenosaurs, Oviraptors and Kin just kind of look better with feathers on. Otherwise, they just kind of look like naked chickens. The reason for its B-tier placement is the face. It's so ugly. To the point where it's kind of distracting how different of a vibe the face gives from the rest of the body. It might just be the posing, but it really puts the design down for me. For the final member of B-tier, we have Therizinosaurus. The new Theri is a design that is fine in a vacuum, but I do think it kind of falls flat for the aisle conceptually. To me, it feels less like a redesign, and more like an imitation. In my opinion, it really feels like they really wanted to continue using the Stopping Lands theory but couldn't, so they just remade it without giving it anything unique. I wouldn't blame them, of course. The Stopping Lands Therizinosaurus is potentially the most iconic Therizinosaurus in modern media, to the point where it's inspired media bigger than itself. 
but the attempt to replicate it in my opinion has largely left it feeling empty, even if it's just fine on an objective level. Alright everyone, we reached the end of what I considered the good Al designs. It's only downhill from here. C tier will be the middle ground, where, although I'm more indifferent about them, there's a lot to dislike. For all intents and purposes, C tier is the bad tier, while D and F are where the true garbage lies. First in C tier, there is Albertosaurus. I do think it is kind of unique that they gave Albertosaurus T-Rex proportions, but I think in the process that it lost a bit of its identity. Albertosaurus has always been known in media and science as a smaller, faster cousin to Tyrannosaurus, and the Isle sort of ruins this by making it look like a not T-Rex. Although in the design's defense, they still keep the identity quite a bit with the head. There, it's still Albertosaurus through and through. Acrocanthosaurus is up next, and with this guide, there is plenty of opinions. For me at least, I love a lot about this design. I've always loved chunky acros. They really exude a sense of power and hilarious thickness that you don't really see in a lot of other large theropods. Not to mention, between you and me, I didn't really like the original acro to begin with. However, even I admit that it's a bit too thick, especially when it doesn't really have a neck. This thickness can also be really distracting since I believe it's meant to be one of the swifter large theropods, although this may just be what I've heard versus what's actually correct, so don't take my word for it. I've also seen a lot of people hate on the skull, since it doesn't really look like acro at all. I agree, although it doesn't really bother me since no offense to any acro lovers out there, but the head isn't really what made Acro memorable. Moving on to a small herbivore, there's Dryosaurus. Spoiler alert, but this is the only member of C tier that isn't a giant carnivore. The reason for its C tier placement? It may be an okay design on its own, but it is just straight up inferior to the original. The box face is very random and kind of ugly, not really offering much in the way of appeal outside of Thanos and Big Daddy memes. Now to Giganotosaurus. The Envirma Giga design on its own isn't really that bad, but out of all the revamp designs, this is the one that pales in comparison to the original the most. The original Giga was both unique, beautiful, and faithful to Giganotosaurus. The new one just doesn't look as good, it's become more generic by adopting the stereotypically incorrect skull that still plagues Giganotosaurus depictions, and it has the Hypo X armor that I really don't quite understand when other strains exist, and only Giga and Spino seem to have it compared to other dinosaurs, especially Rex. Speaking of Spino, that's the next design in C tier. This may be a controversial opinion, but I do think this version of Spino is better than the original one that existed in Legacy. The original Legacy Spino was built like a fucking billboard, and when it moved, it flopped around like its spine was a pool noodle. However, better doesn't mean good. The Isle's new Spino, along with the back armor that I still really don't quite get, really fails to feel like a Spinosaurus in my opinion. In short terms, to me, it feels less like Spinosaurus and more like a generic theropod trying to be a Spinosaurus. The head in particular really gives off that impression. It's also been further cemented by the joke that the Spino's head was just the Rex's face but extended. The concept art Fred made was way better than this. Finally, for C tier, and this is possibly the most controversial decision on this tier list, there is the T-Rex itself. Now, in terms of visuals, the Rex is great. While maybe slightly JPified, it's not really that exaggerated from what a T-Rex is supposed to look like, while still looking badass all the same like you'd expect from a T-Rex. The problem for me is not how the T-Rex is visually, but instead in how it sounds. I seem to be the only one to really notice, and or care, but the Rex's calls are basically just the same as the Jurassic Park T-Rex, just edited slightly. This really brings down the Rex for me. Instead of being a cool Rex, I can only think of how much it rips off Jurassic Park. Although I'll admit it's definitely not as blatant as some of the other ones that we'll see later. Now that we're done with C tier, we're really going to be going into the shit ones. D tier is for the shit that I can still see redeeming stuff in, albeit they're still really bad designs. The first of these is Ankylosaurus, 
Presky me boy, I am very sorry. Enki may have not been a bad animal when you made your legendary video, but it certainly is now. The Indian Rhino hide is unique in concept, which is why it's in D tier and not F, but it really doesn't work in practice. It's really sad to see a unique dinosaur get washed so severely into a modern mammal archetype. The debt in its back is also really confusing and really pushes Ankylosaurus' ugliness further with the new design. Moving on, Bipyalosaurus fails conceptually in a multitude of ways. Now I think that the playstyle is actually kind of cute and quite interesting, which is why it's in D tier, but it has a plethora of issues regardless. First, the fact that it looks absolutely nothing like a Bipyalosaurus except for the name and the hands. What the hell was the point? They took this and turned it into a penguin. And for what? Their excuse was that it was really the only way that they figured out to how to make it viable. I was fine with this at first, until I did literally 10 more seconds of thought. Bipyalosaurus's feathers are known to be quite quilly. They could have made it into a porcupine, where it's sharp from both the front and the back. They also could have made it a burrower. Their xenosaurs are often compared to ground sloths, and those are well-known excavators. But no, instead we just get fish bird with wolverine hands. The final member of D tier is Minmi. Now I know what y'all are saying. How could I hate this adorable face? And, and, and you're right, it's very cute, which makes it quite memorable, and it also has a very clean and naturalistic looking design to boot. However, with Minmi, I have two big problems. The first, the Isle's Minmi is literally just Kumbarasaurus, which is the other small obscure armored boy from Australia. This is very questionable. It makes me wonder why they didn't just call it Kumbarasaurus, or make it actually look like what it's supposed to be. Second, it's conceptualized behavior. This boy can literally do everything. It can burrow, it can defend, it can swim? Why is this guy so overgeneralized? Also, and may I reiterate, why does it swim? It has downward facing nostrils. Aquatic ankylosaurs are cursed. They fucking sink. Stop it. Now we're moving on to F tier. Ugh. This place reeks of the ugly and the uninspired. To me, everything here is irredeemable. Please throw it away. They cannot be saved. First is Ostraraptor. Here we fucking go. They took one of the most recognizable faces of the Isle's early days and turned it into a car crash. First of all, the animal's proportions are hilariously cartoony compared to every other dinosaur plan for the game. I get they were trying to make it look like a heron, but they failed. Its head is nearly as big as its torso, with a neck that barely looks like it supports it. It's very stupid. Then there's the design of the feathers. W what the hell am I supposed to be looking at? Is it meant to be naked? Or is the feathers just really tightly packed to the body? I think I see the feather line on its face? But then you can also see skin definition on the legs and neck. What? There's also the fact that the primary feathers are just sort of tagged on in a bunch of places, which only makes it look like a mangy crack bird rather than anything majestic like the pose seems like it wants to suggest. This is just the first of many designs in F tier that the Isle just absolutely ruins. Next is Megalania. You know Monitor Lizards. You know Komodo Dragons. They're cool. They're badass. They're one of the most metal animals around today. You know why people unironically call them dragons, and you know why people give them badass music and videos. They're awesome. Well, happily for you viewer, the Isle comes along and somehow fucks up the biggest dragon that actually existed. I guess they wanted to make it look more dragon-like, but it looks like to me, with that humped back and that brain-dead, deranged-looking face, that the actual Megalania did nothing but commit incest for a few thousand years. <sighs> to calm down a bit and give myself a break, there is Magyarosaurus. I'm not going to go too hard on it because it's been the Isle's punching bag ever since it's been revealed. Not only does it look horrendous, not really looking like any actual sauropod, but it's conceptually flawed in this realistic world that the Isle itself has created, to where they employ real-world logic into balancing and gameplay decisions, how in the ever-living fuck did they think an island dwarf, which would have no real defenses against any competent land predator, 
be a good pick for this game? The answer? Give it a load of contrived bullshit. What an absolute dumpster fire of a creature. If you find appeal in this disgrace against God, good for you. But any competent human being can see the flaws behind this thing's very existence. Alright, now that I've calmed down, time to go right back to being pissed, because we're not done. This right here is our Jurassic Park ripoff special. The Compsognathus, Gallimimus, Troodon, and Euteraptor are all blatantly obvious Jurassic Park ripoffs that have no business being in this game. Their designs are lazy, uninspired garbage that glaringly stand out compared to the rest of the roster. Remember earlier in the tier list when I said that there's a special set of featherless dinos? Well, these are the ones I'm talking about. Outside of these guys, every other dinosaur that realistically would have feathers does have feathers, which makes these guys stand out more than they already fucking do. I have more to speak about Troodon Utoraptor, so let's just focus on Compi and Galley for now. How do I think these guys could be improved? Well, what if the Compies really embrace the dinosaur equivalent of being rats? With their designs being floofy, but in a more magey, ill kind of way, along with a thin tail to really embrace the image. Maybe, because they hang around carcasses so much, they could have diseases in their feathers which make them intolerable for large carnivores while smaller carnivores that are more adept to hunt them are immune. For the Gallimimus, I really got the impression from the concept art that they really wanted a dinosaur that was... pompous. Arrogant. Y you know the stereotype of someone that really cares about how they look? Always pretty, always dignified, but is also really passive-aggressive and really nasty when nobody's looking? I really feel like that could have been emphasized in the design. I know that drooping feathers on ornithomimosaurs is a bit of a trend, but I do think it would really work for emphasizing certain features, a lot like those certain dog breeds do. It would also allow the galley to change shape for certain situations, whether to impress or intimidate. Regardless of whether or not you really think these are good ideas, it's better than the nothingness that these two exude. Now to move on to the Troodon. The Troodon is fucked in a multitude of ways. First. In case there's some people who don't know, Troodon, as a dinosaur, literally doesn't exist. Troodon isn't a real dinosaur anymore, people. It hasn't since 2017. Now I'd understand if Troodon's introduction in the aisle was when this was a topic of discussion, or if this was before that happened, like with Ark, but it has been four goddamn years, nearly half a decade. Remember earlier in this video when I said that a lot of the Isle's dinosaurs felt fake? Well, this one is literally fake. They created a made-up creature and are trying to masquerade it as something genuine. I can't be the only one that sees a problem with this. Also, even if we ignored this fact, which we really shouldn't, by the way, it's still an uninspired mess. Let's examine the Owl's Troodon for a minute. Hmm, the Owl's Troodon is a very small, lanky dinosaur that is conceptually planned to be a nightmare in the darkness that uses venom to incapacitate its prey. Hmm, where have I seen that before? Now the Utoraptor. Even if you don't agree with the rest, this one is so obvious that even people that are blind would be able to tell it's a ripoff. That's that's not completely a joke by the way, because the damn thing sounds like him too. People of the internet. In case you don't know, raptors are a group of dinosaurs that are actually quite different on a case-by-case -case basis, at least with the most popular species. Even the Isle knows this, since the Australaptor, Velociraptor, and Utoraptor are all quite different from each other. So please stop using the goddamn Jurassic Park inserts. If you're going to do this bullshit, at least call it Novaraptor like it was planned to initially. At least that makes it obviously fake, unlike a certain ankle biter. Okay everyone, we're almost done. Sorry to all the Isle simps I probably pissed off. Feels good to be back, I guess. We. For the final member of F tier, I've saved the worst for last. For me, the design that is undoubtedly the worst in the aisle is the Pteranodon. I fucking hate this thing. If I am to give a smidge of redeeming qualities, the head is nice. It looks like a Pteranodon head. That's just peachy. However, they screwed up literally everything else. The wings of the Pteranodon look like trash bags and the shape of them is uncomfortably similar to how David Peters depicts his pterosaurs in flight. Also, the fucking thing takes off on two feet. 
This is potentially the biggest sin I've seen committed by any dinosaur game. It's not a bird. They don't move like birds. Imagine this. Imagine there's a game that has frogs. You'd expect the frog to hop away from you when it feels like it's in danger, right? Nope. Instead, they get on two feet and away while you're both terrified and very confused. That's basically what the Isle did with Tyrandon's takeoff. I get that there is another takeoff that uses the quad launch, but just because you can ignore it doesn't mean it stops existing. God, Tyrannodon makes me terrified of what they'll do for the cats. Please don't fuck that beautiful creature up. I personally consider the Tyrannodon a lost cause. Fuck this thing. Alright, at this point, we've reached the end of the video. Here is the final tier list. I hope you all enjoyed. I personally hope they go back to the shittier designs still in the concept phase and give them a makeover. They're still in the concept phase, so they could do that. I will say that the good to bad ratio wasn't as bad as I was expecting reviewing them all, but still nearly 40% of the designs are still what I'd call bad, which I feel isn't really a good look for a game like this. Also, I hope I really didn't make you all too angry. I hope this video wasn't too negative. No, normally I'm not this angry, but I'm trying to work on showing more emotion along with getting back to the groove of making videos. Regardless, if you've been wondering where I've been in terms of other content, like Mistaken Truths or the Scallywax film, they'll come unmotivated. My current line of real-life work involves video editing, and when something like that becomes your job, you kinda wanna spend your free time doing other things, you know? Also, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. I've been wanting to do a stream to celebrate, but COVID means that the home is often busy and I don't know when I'll get around to it. Alright, alright. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you all on the other side.